please pardon my mess, my gnarly what's left of my manicure. It's chaotic here. Honestly, I moved this week and it has been utter pandemonium. Um, I would describe it as a low key nightmare. <laughs> uh, I'm fully moved in as of today. It took a week and two days and so many trips and so many like hurdles. So thank you everyone for your patience. It's gonna take me a while to catch up on emails and responding. I'm usually pretty good about it. Um, however, what's fallen by the wayside is the chaotic mess that is going to be my new Etsy space. So I scrapped the last unboxing uh, video I did for this la uh, this haul in Columbia and the beginning of Adamstown because I tried to do it like a day or two ago when I was not settled in at all and it was hard to watch. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it at that. So I do know where everything is this time that's at least in this haul. So please be patient with me as I continue to um, unbox my life as well as my Etsy birch. Now I will say before I moved, I did two huge shopping trips that were pre-recorded. Um, we're halfway through this one now, and then there's another one coming up. And I had the thought, I'm totally going to overwhelm myself with how much merchandise I bought. And I did. However, there's a lot of good stuff to go through, and there's a lot of great stuff coming up too. So hopefully this haul video isn't going to be too chaotic and hard to watch. Um, the last one, I can't even begin. So let's get right to it. So I have seemed to misplace almost every single receipt. Um, I had them in planters and then I did my unboxing video and then I was like, ah, so I'm gonna do this pretty much by memory. So it's gonna be a little sketch. The first thing I got while I was in Columbia was this lamb planter. I always pick up the Ralpo lamb planters or anything that's like super kitschy. Sorry, my nose is super dusty. Um, I cleaned up the rest of my stuff in Pennsylvania yesterday. So um, the one thing I didn't see when I bought it was that it's got a chip on the bottom or the back, I should say, but it's super unique. I love the little face. I always pick these up at the right prices if they have this kitschy little uh, face. This one was only $4.80, so I don't feel that bad about buying it with a chip, um, especially because although I see a lot of the lamb with cart planters, this is really the first one I've seen with this kind of like Cinderella cabbage leaf uh, cart behind it. Next up in Columbia, I got this amazing little Nina Hira rubber doll. Now she doesn't squeak anymore. She's got a little wear. She is marked on the bottom Nina Hira. Now a lot of these are super collectible and sell for good money. Not all of them but I always look them up whenever I see the Nina Hira sign uh, symbol on the bottom and I always buy it if it's under the right price. And this little girl was I believe she was six dollars. Now I did look her up. The least expensive one I saw and sold was fifty dollars. And there's only one listed now and it's at 75. I put 49 with my free US shipping um, on my shop. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get her, just get that just because of the condition, but I'm gonna wait and hold out and see um, just because these are super collectible. And I love her kind of like school girl meets Marie Antoinette hairstyle. I bought two brooches while I was in Colombia. Now, one was a little candy cane made in Hong Kong. It was so cute. Uh, I paid $3 for it. I did ship it out already. Now, this next one, I couldn't resist. It was so unique. It was only $6.40. Um, what's so interesting about it is that it's got a little hole to put a flower in or some kind of trinket or doodad. Uh, I love a good vintage costume brooch. They're super easy to ship and um, there's some really unique ones out there. I have them like all over my lapels on my winter coats usually. So uh, I pick them up from time to time. I don't overwhelm myself with them because they're super small and I don't want to lose them. <laughs> but uh, this one, since it was different than one I'd seen before and the fact that it wasn't in a locked case. Well, it was in a locked case actually, just kidding. But I was getting other stuff out of the case. Usually I don't mess with costume jewelry because I hate cases. Um, but in the case, I also got this. 
This little spun Japan uh, angel ornament is so cute. Now this I did pay $6.40 for. I got a bunch of these that were similar, not the same. They had different colored hair. They had, like pink and blue hair. It was amazing. From this vendor last Christmas. And I believe I underpriced them. I They were not the same as this, but they were all $18 and they all sold. I had like 10 of them and they all sold within like 20 minutes of posting and then my inbox was flooded and like do you have more and I was like oof but whatever they went to good homes people appreciate them they're super cute and especially because this one's so clean it's like brand new um so I bought her for six dollars and 40 cents and she just sold for 15 dollars so I'm gonna set her aside and ship her out today this was a super interesting find at Columbia um this mermaid here She's a cake topper. She's made in Hong Kong. Now she is marked um, V-E-N-Y, which is a maker I am unfamiliar with. However, mermaid and cake topper, I could not resist. Mermaids usually sell super, super well. I always pick them up if they're vintage and anywhere near right price. She was $8 and she sold immediately for $28. Now I tried to look them up online. I saw um, ones that were in lots of other ones, um, like grouped together with different cake toppers and stuff. So I kind of did like an average, like, Hey, I know this one only sells for a couple bucks. This one sells for that. Um, and then the fact that she is a mermaid and she's so unique. I mean, I have never seen this one before. Now, one of the things I hated about my last unboxing video from this was I couldn't find half this stuff. I did accidentally leave this in Pennsylvania. I went back yesterday uh, and grabbed it. They're new old stock Christmas boxes. Now, of course, I love the Bluebird. I think they're very cute. They're kind of like classic traditional tattoo style. But what really sold me was the Hollyberry girl, the poinsettia girl, excuse me. I am obsessed with her. She's like the epitome of kitsch Christmas and paid $4 for the bag. They are pristine new old stock. There's two of each. It sold for $20 and honestly, it's just because of uh, the poinsettia girl. I mean, she's very whole towardy Christmas kitsch. I mean, I just am obsessed with her. So these have sold and the next place I went was Heritage and I'm gonna dig that stuff out now. All right, I'm back. Please do excuse my big load of recycling. I'm gonna reuse this all, so it's brand new from my move. Um, I got this stuff here and we'll get this stuff out. So the first thing I got when I went to, gosh, I always forget the name of it, Adamstown Heritage, was this super unique salt and pepper shaker set. Now these kind of like two in one TV retro mid-century uh, snow globe salt and pepper shakers, unfortunately, this one is missing the stoppers to put water in but uh, you can still see the glitter in it. It's Sears advertising, which is super neat. Um, I see a lot of that old advertising ones, uh, the, of course, the washer dryer and things like that, but I've never seen this particular set. I always will pick these style of salt and pepper shakers up, especially because they're super collectible, hard to find and easy to ship if they're under a certain price. This one I paid $6 for. I was unable to find anything like it on the internet. So I took a wild guess at what I've sold a few other ones like this for. I probably could have gotten more to be honest, but I just wanted to be fair since I wasn't sure. And I sold it immediately for $17. Speaking of salt and pepper shakers, this was an awesome find. This is a Holt Howard set. Now it is not marked, it's missing its sticker. However, I'd had it before, so I knew what it was. My last, oop, oop. My phone's gonna die. I forgot to charge it last night. I am a total mess, just so you know. Um, <laughs> we'll get there. Next week will be a new week. I'm I'm positive of it. Positive of it. So anyway, the last that I hold sold sold for fifty dollars, and of course that includes the U.S. shipping, um, which is about let's say to get to California, I round up. It's about five dollars. So I posted these for forty nine. Um, you know, they are Holt Howard and I've sold them for that price before, but I'm thinking about going back and lowering it a few dollars just because I, I don't think it's right. Just because they're not the hardest to find, even though they're super collectible and super desirable. Um, I do think that they've kind of decreased in value. I've seen them more recently than not. So I think I'm going to go back and lower it. I just don't feel right about it, even though I've done it before. 
Um, my last set was completely pristine. They looked brand new. This one does have like a tiny bit of paint loss on one seat. It's not a big deal, but either way, it didn't sit with me right last night. So I think I'm going to go fix that. This is another fun set, uh, this cow salt and pepper shaker set. Now this one is super easy to sell. Um, I've had it a few times, which is why I don't price them for top dollar. Uh, I do believe they might take like a couple days to sell just because, um, you know, it, it. they are on the more common side, but there are more desirable with the ones with these kind of eyelashes and kitschy faces. I only paid $3 for them. I posted them for 16. Um, Oh, I just realized that I forgot something I, I didn't show at Columbia. Hold on. How could I forget this guy? Everybody knows I'm a sucker for snowmen. This pick is incredible. It's It was $6. Um, I posted it for 20 just because it is flocked. It is harder to find. And it's in pretty decent condition considering it's from the 60s. Um, it's, it's a little loose at the bow right here. But I mean, that just takes a little bit of glue. I don't modify my items when I buy it. I leave it up to the buyer to do with them as they will. Since I am not their forever home, I don't think I should forever modify them. I always sell as found. Not that there's anything wrong with not selling as found, but I'm not a restorer. Um, I just, you know, sometimes I see something and I have an idea and I'm like, oh, this would be great if I did this with it. And I just don't want to add extra energy for myself to someone, to someone who wants to undo what I've done. I love this little flock snowman. I paid $6 for them. I posted them for $20. Um, I did see a few comparables that sold from the $18 to $25 range. So I felt like $20 was fair since it's right after Christmas and it's kind of a novelty item. I don't think he'll sell immediately. I could be wrong. Um, but either way, I felt pretty confident picking him up for $6. Bucks. Hopping back to where am I? Heritage. I'm obsessed with this snowman. Now, I did pay up for him a little bit. I paid almost $16 for him, but it was really his unique size that spoke to me. I usually see these in the smaller ones, which will be coming up, um, but he had that kind of putz German candy container style to him. Now, he is made in Japan. Uh, I, someone wrote the number 27. It probably came from an auction, honestly. Um, but underneath that, it, it is marked Japan, and he was in such great condition. He's even got most of the red on his nose still. I just could not resist. Sucker for snowmen, and harder to find, especially anywhere near that price. Um, and these usually sell between $25 and $35, so I put them right in the middle. Uh, I feel pretty confident he will sell for that price. I'm not pressed to get rid of him. I'm really enjoying having him on my desk. Um, speaking of which, look at these little guys. Now this, I believe the discount came to $5.30 for the pair. They were $8.40% off. I'm not gonna pull out my calculator. It was around that price, um, which is great because I'll be able to double my money on just one of them. Now, this one does have its original mittens and is in great condition. This one, I love their little chenille pipe cleaner scarves. Uh, he is missing his mittens, so I priced him a little bit lower. I priced this one at 13 and this one at 15. Um, it's a little bit on the higher side, but I do think it's more of an average price. And the snowmen, like I said, are harder to find. And I just think they're more desirable, honestly. It's something I always look for when I'm out. Um, it's not easy to find snowmen when you're out, especially at affordable prices and their <laughs> wonky little faces with their scars. I just couldn't resist them. They are also made in Japan and, uh, I just, they bring such joy. <laughs> Next up, I got these little mini mugs. Now I do have four of these. I'm not going to grab the other two of my shelves. They're all the exact same. I paid $6 and 20% off. So $4 and 80 cents for them each. I'm a big fan of the Santa Claus mini mug, um, the face mugs, all that. They sell super, super quick. I always grab them when they're for the right price. I don't sell them for top dollar. Now these I did price at $12 each, which is a little bit higher than my normal mini mugs, um, just because they are more unique, especially with the Holly Berry and they kind of have that Holt Howard style. Um, the Holt Howard mini mugs are the only ones I do sell for top dollar because Old Howard Christmas. I'm sorry, but you nothing compares to it. However, uh, one of these have already sold at least one. I'm not sure. Maybe more. Maybe two. Actually, just kidding. But 
I think they'll go quick. It's been a day and they're already half gone. So I will be able to double my money each on these, which is a great profit. And again, I love the mini mugs because they're super easy to ship. They're a great add-on item um, with the order. Uh, if somebody wants, you know, the ones that I had in the past were priced a little bit lower. They were a different um, style. And, you know, it would be like, hey, if you grab this with that, then you get free shipping. Um, but really, I just paid a couple dollars for them each, so it was still profit for me. I hope that makes sense. I'm super scatterbrained. I think I'm gonna have to eat lunch after I go through the next couple items. I only have a few more to go. Now, this next one, I used to pick these up all the time. There's many different variations of them. They're made by Napco Wear. Um, what I do like about these ones is they have the little tinsel and yarn trim hair. Uh, I think she's adorable. I am just now seeing she is repaired which I have failed to notice multiple times. Is she repaired? It's a really good repair if it is repaired. I can't even tell, honestly. I really cannot tell if this is repaired. I don't think it is. No, it's not repaired. Because it would have to, there would have to be some type of, maybe? <sighs> Either way. Um, I didn't price her for top dollar. I paid $6.40 for her. I priced it at 15. I might knock a dollar off just because I'm a little confused by her what was really amazing to me is that her paint was all in pristine condition um this is a very strange line i think it's just the paint mark yeah there's no way that's repaired anyway i'm gonna have a good time looking at that later because that is really stumping me now this next item is something i usually pass on there's many different variations of it and i do not do battery op um unfortunately i did the box has some damage but i fell in love with it because it was so dainty and the fact that it was white now normally I do see the green Christmas tree with the plastic base this one is made in Japan so it's a little bit older than the Hong Kong ones and I took it out to see what was the base out to see what was going on underneath it and I can't get it to um, sit right <laughs> again I'm sure it does there's a trick to it but um, yeah there it is oh Oh, there you go, I did it. Anyway, it's only missing a couple little of its bulbs and it's got its little candles. Uh, I'm selling it as is, the box has damage, but you know, a good one, like one in pristine condition with the original box, is, it usually sells for about $45 in this style. I priced mine at 30, I believe I paid $13.20 for it, um, around that range, and I love the little fake snow glitter and. It's just so precious. I mean, I hate using the word precious, but the fact that it's paper and it is in such good condition as it is, I mean, a sucker for anything miniature. Um, again, and it was it was different, you know? I mean, the green ones with the plastic bases are the ones I most commonly see, and I see them all the time online, and I just get quite tired of seeing them, quite frank, but this one was pretty sweet, so I decided to grab it. Speaking of sweet, I could not resist this miniature bone trying deer. Now, I have second thoughts about this one. So I paid $3. $3 for it? $4, $3, $2, somewhere in that range. It sold immediately for $15. What I'm having second thoughts about it is, it looks like a Hosef Originals one. And I think I messed up, but someone got a really good deal. Hosef Originals deer are really hard to find and sell for good money. Um, but again, it wasn't marked and I did have second guesses, so I didn't want to make something up, but either way, I mean, with the matte glaze, especially instead of like the, um, gloss that it usually has, I just thought it was so adorable. I could not resist. It's going to a good home. It's a repeat buyer. I hope you love it. It's adorable. I think this is my last item. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to go through again because everything's kind of everywhere. Like I said, I'm trying to, uh get some type of organization down. I'm not doing a very great job so far. But next up, I paid up for this Lefton nurse planter. I couldn't resist. I have such a thing for nurses. Now, I paid $16 for her. I saw her online sell for anywhere from $25 to $30. It sold for $30. I'm happy with that. She's in pretty great condition. And she's super unique. I saw a picture of one of these online over the summer and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to have that. That's so sweet but I'd never seen one in person before, so I felt confident. Um, as much as I go out shopping, if I've seen something for the first time after, you know, this many years of doing this, 
uh, I feel pretty confident if I'm super attracted to pick it up. So again, I didn't double my money. It was very close, but it made me happy to uh, have this in stock in my shop. So I think that's it. It might not be, but I think it is. That's it for me today at least. I need to eat lunch and get some of these orders out and get some stuff on the shelves, get rid of this recycling mess. Now, I am gonna show you guys my new place. I'm gonna show it off when it's done. Um, it probably won't be until after Valentine's Day. It will be at least a month just because I really wanna get this place spick and span and up to its utmost potential. I'm obsessed with it here. I love it. And uh, I'm gonna go get some tacos. I will see you guys tomorrow.